what better way to start this than by freaking out? Hello, and welcome to my new YouTube channel. That is a very weird sentence to say. Welcome to Reading with Opinions, which is a YouTube channel where I read stuff and tell you what I thought. Simple enough. My name is Emmy, like the award, and I've wanted to make a channel like this for some time now, so I'm really excited to actually uh, be doing it and stuff. So for my first ever video, I decided to do the mid-year book freak out tag because what better way to start this than by freaking out? So if you haven't seen one of these before, basically I'm just taking all the books that I read in the first half of the year and I'm going to pick some of my favorites, some of my least favorites. There's a set of questions that I'll be going through. Hopefully this will give you a taste of what sort of stuff I'm interested in reading and you can decide if you care or not, I guess. <laughs> First question is, what is your favorite book that you've read so far this year? And for this one, I'm going to go with The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. This is actually a reread for me. I read it like five, six-ish years ago, and I remember just being like absolutely blown away by the writing in it. We follow Carolyn, who is a librarian in a magical library, and she's a part of this group of librarians that all cover a different subject. Their knowledge and abilities lead to what we might think of as supernatural powers. Eventually we find out that the librarians in fact are working for God. Pretty cool take on the whole Library of Wonders thing in my opinion. And as opposed to Carolyn and the magical librarians, we also follow Steve, who's just seemingly a normal dude that gets caught up in all of this magical nonsense. This book is really really dark. I would just apply every trigger warning that you can possibly think of, but if you are okay with this, and especially if you're into dark academia, emphasis on the dark, then I would definitely recommend picking up this book. It's his debut novel, Scott Hawkins. I really hope that he puts something out again in the future because this is still his only novel as of now. I just checked on the website a couple days ago. I think this book is so stunning and I want more from him. Next up we have Best Sequel that I've read this year and um, for that I think I might be cheating, I'm not sure. I decided to go with Don Shard by Brandon Sanderson. If you don't know Brandon Sanderson, he is the author of Mistborn, the author of the Stormlight Archive, and that's what this is actually a part of. It is a novella that is set in between books. For a novella it's pretty long. It's 290 pages, which is the size of some full-length books, but if you compare it to one of the books in the Stormlight Archive, you know, <laughs> it doesn't really compare in terms of length. For this we are following Reason, who was a minor character in the first Stormlight Archive books. We've seen her go in and out. She hasn't really been a part of the main plot. Sanderson does these interludes where we'll follow these minor characters around, and she's one of the minor characters. Her story is really fascinating. When we first meet her character in the Stormlight Archive, not in this book, she's very headstrong. She's a merchant and learning how to become a better merchant, just the ways of trade in Roshar, which is the continent in which the Stormlight Archive is set. Minor spoiler alert, though not for this book, she actually ends up becoming paralyzed in those books. So she kind of has to grapple with this freedom that she has lost and learning how to find her own freedom. In Dawn Shard, we end up following her on one of her trade missions, which ends up being to a different portion of the country that we haven't seen before, that we've only heard legends about. And we also get to follow a couple of the more minor characters in the Windrunners, which is is really exciting. I really really enjoyed this book. As you can see behind me I am a pretty big Brandon Sanderson fan so anything he writes is always going to be at the top of my list. But I really enjoyed this little story. It is a nice thing to tide me over until Stormlight 5 comes out hopefully sometime next year. Next up is new release that I haven't read yet that I'm excited to read. For this I have two picks. The first book is She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. Now this book has the absolute audacity to bill itself on Goodreads as a book that meets in the middle between Mulan and The Song of Achilles. Love Mulan, have not read The Song of Achilles, which I think might be blasphemy in the booktube community. What I've heard is that instead of being more like Song of Achilles, it's more like The Poppy War, which is a book that I 
absolutely adore. She Who Became the Sun is set in an alternative 1345 China where the country is under Mongol rule. And we begin with two siblings, I believe, being given very different fates, boy and girl. The boy is given the fate of greatness and the girl is given the fate of nothingness. However, the boy ends up dying and the girl steals his identity in order to survive in this war-torn country. From what I've heard about this book, it's kind of a brutal read. Like, it's not warm and fuzzy, which I kind of love. It's also obviously non-European, but still really in that just in terms of time period medieval fantasy realm, and I've heard that there are some LGBTQ elements also, which I'm also really excited to read about. The other book that I really want to read is Babel by R.F. Kuang, and I didn't even know she had a new book out until a couple days ago. I will read anything that lady puts out. I already mentioned The Poppy War earlier. That is the author of The Poppy War, which is just a stunning series, a really amazing take on the opium wars in China. This new book I don't really know that much about except that it's about the Tower of Babel and translation, I believe, just translating in general, but I will just read anything she writes. I think that she is absolutely brilliant, so I need to get my hands on that as soon as possible. Next up is the most anticipated read for the second half of the year, and I've already mentioned Brandon Sanderson, but I'm going to have to go with The Lost Metal, coming out in November 2022. It is the conclusion to the second Mistborn arc in the Wax and Wayne series. So you have the first Mistborn trilogy, and then you have the second arc, which is going to end up being a quartet. This book has been a long time coming. I'm really excited to see this leg of Mistborn finally wrap up. It's been a few years, I think, since he put a book out. Yeah, I'm just really excited to see how he ends the series. I think that the first Mistborn trilogy just had these amazing characters that I absolutely love. To be honest, in the second part, the second leg, I guess, I didn't love the characters quite as much as in the first trilogy, but I thought just the world building and the lore, as well as the way that it starts to just tie into the general Cosmere, is really, really cool. And I'm curious to see what he ends up doing with this last book as he wraps up this segment of Mistborn before he moves on to the next one, which I also can't wait to read. But who knows when that is going to be, because he is so many series, my god. We are truly blessed that Brandon writes as fast as he does. Thank you very much. Next up is the biggest disappointment in the first half of the year for me. The most disappointing read in the books that I have read. When I picked this book up, I didn't realize that it was as popular as it was, and I read it and I was like, schmeh. And then I saw people like, loving on this book, and I'm kind of confused to be honest. And that, unfortunately, is the Atlas Six by Olivier. You know, like when you say something out loud for the first time, Olivier Blake. I'm so sorry. We follow this group of young magicians that have been admitted into the Alexandrian society, which is formed around the Alexandrian library, the lost library. As you might recall, I really like books about libraries. And the thing is, I love that premise. Like, give me the library, give me the magic. I, I love that idea, but just in terms of execution, it really fell flat for me. If you're gonna center it around a library, I need to see the library. Like, I'm sorry. There's, there was not enough library porn in here for me. I need to know what's happening. I need to know what they're studying. Like for me, dark academia, like you've got to get into the nitty gritty of the academia and the world and the magic. And I felt like that part was all just surface level, like it didn't matter. This ended up being less about the library, less about the magic system, and more just like about the sexy times <laughs> that the characters were having with each other. I also felt like the characters that didn't have that sexual tension with each other were so, they were given so much less screen time, which I really didn't appreciate. If you're gonna have six main characters wandering around and getting all their different viewpoints, I would prefer it to be more of an equal thing. Yeah, I was disappointed. I'm sorry. I think I still want to read the next one just to see if she does build up the world a little bit more because again, concept wise, just execution was not it for me. I'm sorry. Next question is most surprising read of the year. And for that, I'm going to go with Light from Uncommon Stars by Reika Aoki. So this book is weird. 
<laughs> like, I love it, but it, it's super weird, and I'm into it. It's honestly really hard to describe what happens in this book, because the premise is just so out of left field. So I think I'll describe the three main characters. First main character is a world-renowned violin teacher who has made a deal with the devil. And the deal is that she has to deliver seven souls of young prodigy violin players, and she has already delivered six. Second character is Katrina, who is a young transgender violinist who has unfortunately had to deal with a lot of abuse and persecution because she is transgender. And the third main character is an alien who runs a donut shop. All three of these characters interact in really meaningful and beautiful ways. This is just such like a warm fuzzy read. I love the world that has been created in here. I love the different characters. They're all incredibly vibrant and have their own personalities. If you know me in real life, you'll know that I am a professional violinist. And just the depiction of music, the way that things were described, the pieces that were picked, it really was just smart choices. The characters are lovely, the writing is whimsical and excellent, and I was really surprised by this. Next up is new favorite author, and because I am at heart a basic bitch, I'm going to pick Emily Henry. I ended up reading three of her books all in a row because I was visiting my parents this summer and my mom also loves Emily Henry, and they're just really delightful little comfort reads. I ended up reading, in this order, People You Meet on Vacation, Book Lovers, and Beach Read. Really liked all of them, just like her romances in general. I think that the characters have a good amount of like tension, but also spice in terms of the dialogue. I need a spicy dialogue. Out of the three of those, I think my favorite was probably Book Lovers. It's the most recent one that she's put out. People We Meet on Vacation wasn't quite as up there for me. I just really enjoyed the dialogue in Book Lovers between the two main characters. And there was a lot of like friction and sarcasm and I was super into that. Along with that pick, the next question is newest fictional crush. I don't often get crushes on people I read about. <laughs> I don't know, maybe this question is just weird to me. But if I had to pick one, I would pick Charlie from Book Lovers. Because again, he's sassy, he's sarcastic, and he a little bit of banter. I like banter in my romance novels. If they're just gonna fall in love and like not fight with each other, what is even the point? It's too sappy, not into it. But with Charlie, I mean, you have a guy who likes books, is sarcastic, has several jobs, cares about his mom, and is apparently really hot. So what's not to like? Next we have my newest favorite character. And again, I'm kind of cheating because I'm in the middle of this book. I'm reading The Blinding Knife right now by Brent Weeks. And this is the second book in the Lightbringer Quintet. Once I'm done with this behemoth, I'll be 40% of the way through the series. Oh god. And my newest favorite character from the series is going to be Kip. We meet Kip in the first book in the quintet, but for some reason I just, I wasn't as into him as a character in the first one. He's a little bit whiny, he's a teenager, it happens, it's fine. <laughs> In the second book, he really starts coming into his own. He starts getting trained in a couple different ways. He starts maturing. And I just found myself really looking forward to his sections of the book. Again, I haven't finished it yet. Like maybe he sucks in the second half. I'll let you know. For now, I'm gonna say Kip from the Lightbringer Saga. Next up, we have a book that made you cry. Maybe I just have a cold, dead heart, <laughs> but I don't really cry at that many books. I had to really reach for this one. <gasps> Wait, hang on, it's the cat. Oh, yes, do you want a book? Oh, that's a good book. Good girl. Look at that butt scratch. Sorry, I had to go say hi to the neighbor cat. She's very cute. So, yeah, I don't really cry at books at all. But I did reread this book, which is Mandy by Julie Edwards. Yes! That Julie Edwards has written at least one book, maybe more, I don't know. Mandy is one of my favorite childhood books, as you can see. 
It's very well loved. In this, we follow Mandy, who is an orphan that just really desperately wants a home. She finds this old abandoned cottage and starts fixing it up. She saves up her money to buy a broom and clean it up. She does some gardening and she ends up getting into trouble because she steals things from the orphanage where she lives. We come to realize over the course of the book that Mandy just really wants a home and she just wants to be surrounded by people who love her. Spoiler alert, but you know, it's a kid's book. At the end of the book, she does in fact find a family. And that just touches my cold little heart. It has to be a really specific type of book for me to cry, but something that is this wholesome and heartwarming just really does it for me. And if you have a kid who's at a middle grade reading level, like this is just a lovely little book. I think I've had this since I was like nine, 10 years old. I mean, it's, it's really just amazing. Highly recommend. Next up is a book that made you happy. And for that, I'm going to go with The Grand Sophie by Georgette Heyer. Georgette Heyer is one of my favorite romance novelists. She was writing in the mid 20th century and she writes really historically accurate Regency romances. I've heard her work described as Jane Austen light, or in my opinion, Jane Austen, but without the social commentary that Jane Austen used. Pretty much all of her books that she writes are just really lovely little romances. She gives a whole lot of description just about the society, about the customs, the culture. Grand Sophie is a lovely little book. We follow the Ombersley family, who is in a unfortunate situation. The oldest, Charles, is getting married to someone that the family does not like. In comes their cousin, Sophie. Sophie really toes the line in terms of what is thought of as proper and what actually needs to be done to make people happy. Sophie ends up shaking up the dynamics of the family and just making them all a lot happier than before she got there. I should say, if you are tempted to pick up any of Georgette Heyer's romances, they are historically accurate, which means that there are some romances that would have been okay back then that are not okay now. For example, a huge age gap, maybe like first cousins marrying each other. But you just, just ignore that. Just live in the present, you know what I'm saying? Or live, live in the past. Live in the faraway past where you can be happy for them and not worry about incest. Highly recommend any of Georgette Heyer's books, a big favorite of mine. Next up is the most beautiful book that I have bought. For that, I also have two books. I got this at Bookman's, which is a secondhand bookstore near where I live, and I have not read this yet. This is The Girl with the Louding Voice by Abi Dare. This cover is really, really gorgeous. I am a huge, huge fan. We follow a 14 year old Nigerian girl who is really hungry and eager to get a good education. Unfortunately, her father is in desperate need of money and ends up selling her in order to make ends meet. Nevertheless, she is super persistent in her desire to get an education in order to live a better life. I'm not really sure why I haven't read this yet because this looks absolutely stunning. So I need to get to this for sure. The other beautiful book and I actually found this in the little library of all places. This is a copy of Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Stunning cover. It has really beautiful like red pages on the outside. It's a book that makes me feel smart <laughs> to hold. Also this. Ooh, that's satisfying. One more time. Mm, smells good too. It's a hefty boy. Finally, we have books that I need to for sure, absolutely, I promise and I swear, read by the end of the year. Again, have two books for this, I'm sorry. I've already talked about R.F. Kwong a couple of times, but I need to read The Burning God. It has been on my shelf for a bit. I've heard that it's amazing. I've heard that it's the best of the three. I just have not been emotionally available enough to make myself read this yet. Her books are a lot. Like they're difficult. <laughs> I love them, but they just take so much out of me and I just haven't had the brain power to deal with this yet. I'm also the type of person where I really need to reread things. Like I'll need to reread at least the second book in the trilogy before I read this, just to remind myself of characters and like various storylines. I just haven't been in the right mind space to be able to read a series that is this like, gritty again, but I really want to make sure that I get to it. Finally, the other book that I really need to read by the end of the year is Jade City by Fonda Lee. Again, I've heard 
absolutely amazing things about this book. I really don't know that much about this book, except that it's fabulous, and apparently the rest of the series is also fabulous. I'm honestly glad that I'm gonna read it now after Jade War and Jade Legacy have already come out. There's something to do with magical jade in this book, warriors using the magical jade in order to enhance their abilities. And I've also heard that there are some mafia and gangster elements to this as well. <laughs> So that was my freak out. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video. I sure had fun making it and I will be making more in the future. So if you want to see more from me, then subscribe, I guess. Bye.